Hello friends, it's The Stitches. Lately, I've been longing for the perfect long sleeve lace bolero, so I finally decided to break down and make one. I'm basically remaking a bolero that I made in high school that I deeply, deeply regret getting rid of. But when I was in high school, I was absolutely obsessed with the brand Mary Magdalene, RIP. So the shape of this piece is uh, inadvertently heavily inspired by their boleros. Our first step is to find a sloper pattern. I wanted this to be beginner friendly, so we're starting with a basic simplicity pattern that I believe is still easy to find. These are some simple bodysuits, but we won't be using the whole pattern. From Simplicity 8513, I'll be using front and back pieces 1 and 3, as well as sleeve piece number 12. The sleeve can stay as is, but the front and back pieces are cut off at the waistline as it is marked on the pattern. I'm using a vintage fabric from my stash. It's a double mesh lace that's fairly opaque, but this has a really interesting design throughout all of it. For my pattern, I need two fronts, two backs, and two sleeves. Normally, I would serge everything, but my serger is, it desperately needs to be serviced. And this fabric doesn't fray, so luckily we can skip that step. But if you have a fabric that does fray, you'll want to finish your edges. With my leftover fabric, I cut four strips from selvage to selvage, just the length of the whole thing. And these were four inches wide each. These will get set aside to make ruffles. The leftovers of the leftovers will get set aside for the bow clip for the closure that will make it the end of the tutorial. The last bit of supplies we'll need for this project is a, a fair bit of lace for trimming. To construct the bolero base, we'll stitch the back inside seams as well as the shoulder seams. Since none of these seams cross each other or interfere with each other in any way, this can all be done in one single step. And don't forget to press your seams open to keep them looking clean. Always press your seams. Always. Press your seams. The sleeves get turned into tubes, which in turn become, well, sleeves. Luckily, most commercial patterns come with ample instructions, so if you haven't figured out how to assemble a three-piece top, your pattern instructions should clarify things. The one thing that will differentiate my sleeves from the pattern is the inclusion of a lace hem. All you have to do is pin the lace to the fabric with about a quarter inch of a space for seam allowance. Make sure that they're right sides together with the lace facing in towards the garment and then stitch it down. After it's stitched in place, we'll press the lace by flipping it out and folding the seam allowance in. And then to secure that in place after it's all ironed down, we'll top stitch close to the edge. And that's a lace hem. Now that the sleeves are hemmed, they are ready to be installed. Just remember to put the right side on the right side and the left side on the left side. So I, uh, I hope you remembered your notches. This will leave us with a structured, if unfinished, garment. I didn't like the sort of square shape that my pattern left on the bottom of my bolero, so I decided to round it out with a rotary cutter. Remember to very, very carefully match your sides if you make any of these kinds of alterations. This shape is way more pleasing to me, and it fits my wardrobe aesthetic much better. Now we prepare our ruffle fabric that we set aside earlier. I'm arranging them in two pairs. 
One set will go along the bottom hem, and one set will go around the neck. Normally, when I make ruffles, I have to make them into tubes, but these shall remain strips. And it's time to break out that lace for more hemming. One of my ruffles only needs one hem, but the other will get the edge opposite the lace turned down twice and pressed. And then once that is stitched into place, it's finished. I don't need to hem the two narrow edges on the sides of the ruffles since it's a selvage and it's already a clean edge. So now we have one fully finished ruffle piece and one half finished ruffle piece. The half-finished ruffle gets added to the bottom hem. We're using the same technique as the lace hem to make our ruffle hem. I like to do my gathering by hand in smaller sections. I just, I, I find it's easier for me. It is, however, time consuming. Hey look, it's the next day. I was careful to remember where the original hem started, but if you have a super curved front, then you'll just want to stop the bottom ruffle right where you want the front closure to be. This part is technically optional, but I find that the bottom ruffle looks so much better when you taper in the ends and then cut away the excess fabric. We're getting so close to the finish line on this bad boy. With the hem ruffle done, it's time to add the neck ruffle. Unlike the hem ruffle, the neck ruffle only needs to be stitched down once it's pinned into place. Theoretically, you could be done here, but I want to make a pin that I can use to close the front without needing to install any ribbons or button loops or anything like that. I have two rectangles that are four inches by five inches, two that are four inches by six inches, and one that is two inches by three inches. The little piece becomes a tube for the middle knot of the bow. The rectangles get paired up and stitched right sides together, leaving a space to turn. Turn them, press them, and then top stitch your pieces, and then you can just turn them into, well, a bow. To secure the bow, I just use a whip stitch. No one's gonna see it anyway. Now it just needs a pin back added to it. This project was a much needed staple that I was definitely missing, especially now that summer is here. I still like having the option to cover up, but I obviously need something a bit breezier than a jacket. I'll probably put Lolita in the title, but there are tons of styles you can wear this with. The shape is definitely inspired by classic Lolita brand pieces, but it would also pair with a Tome or a Mori Girl, even Cult Party or Dolly K. Expect this to show up in a lookbook or two or many. That's all for today. I hope everyone has a great day and I will see you all next time. Bye.